yeah, smear my body up with butter and take me to the Freakers Ball. We're back! That's right, we took last week off. But, uh, yeah, we're back now right here on May 31st, 2019, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com. This is the Freakers Ball, and we're glad to have you all along with us for the ride this evening, for the ball, for the party. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have a good old time right here on the Freakers Ball. That that would be myself and the Mighty Moose Girl hosting, and all y'all there in the chat and out there listening in other places uh, in on the airwaves. Uh, yeah, all y'all. You can watch the video right there on reallibertymedia.com on the Freakers Ball Show page, or go to vaughn.live slash Media and tune us in right directly there. Well, whatever, whatever works for you, really. It, uh, it's all up to you, all up to you. And uh, I see, I see, I think I see. I, I, I said, I said, I saw a thing that said I was getting a call, but I don't see no call. Um, so uh, let me see what the hell's going on there with that. I don't know. I was, I, I, it appeared I was getting a call, but um, not appearing to get a call. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe she'll call back again here in a second. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, welcome to all the folks out there on RealLiberty.org, FreedomsNetwork.com, Minds.com, Twitter, all the various places that the uh, show goes out, is announced out to. Uh, Blackbird, late in, uh, good to see you guys, uh, messaging them back out there. Uh, like, Come on over to RealLibertyMedia.com and join in the chat, there's a chat right there. And uh, we'll, let, me, let me try and give the moose a call, I saw, I saw a thing. I mean, for some reason, it didn't come through. I, I don't know why. But uh, I'll try and give her a call back here. Let's see. Are you supposed to call in? On, it doesn't matter, Bruce. I'm calling you. So hopefully that works. And uh, uh, Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. I've, I've had it work, and I've had it not work. Usually it works. 98% of the time it works. <laughs> but I'm not getting a... I'm not getting a connection there to the moose. I I'm not sure why. Or she's not picking up. She says she don't see the ringy thingy. Weird. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll hang up, and I'll let you call back. Cause, uh, uh, okay, it says you're calling, calling, calling. All right, now it says it's connecting, and it connected. Hello. Hello. Hey, there you are. Oh, here I am. Yeah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't know. The, really uh, weird. Yeah, they, they they did an update today, and it, it messed up Flash really bad earlier. It took me a while to fix his. But, huh. uh, uh, whatever, you know, sometimes updates are not always the best thing. Right. Yeah, but anyway, we're connected, so we're all good. We are. We are. <laughs> we're we're here. Yay. 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 So, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good as well. You know, it's a Friday night, Freakers Ball time. Yep, it is. Yeah. And we're here yeah. uh, once again. But once again, once again. So, yeah, as I was saying earlier, we uh, there was there was no show last week. We took the week off. No. Nope. Huh? And, yeah, yep. I enjoyed myself. That's right. I enjoyed myself as well. You were off yeah. to Harmony. Your Harmony I home. was. Yep. And, and I was off to not doing this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Uh, it, so yeah. Um, anyway, it was good. It was fun. I had a good time. That's cool. That's cool. We'll talk about it in a minute. But let me say hi and howdy yeah, to all sure. the folks here in the chat, people. Okay. First, we got we got the barman and the beetle. Beetle. Yeah. Uh, we got Mister Cowboy beetle. Tech. Cowboy Tech back with us. After, Yay! Missy in action, Cowboy Tech. Not Missy in action now. Nope. He's here in action. What, what, Yay! How about good. It? How about good, good, good. It? Anyway, and you and I are there, in there, of course. We and, are. Uh, DC and a couple of, couple antis. <laughs> We've got Asmo and Chelsea Doty and Miss Graham Z, who did her wonderful show earlier. We got IB Don C as well as DC. How about that? We got Java Doctor and Meester Meister Brow down there in the Cooking Out Arizona. The Ponder Gander who did his show earlier today. Good stuff there. Yeah. Uh, well, if you like that kind of thing, some people don't. I, I don't know why, but some people do. Anyway, we got Miss Kate and Rome's and Vanna and Weather Dork Bots. We got Miss Beth Z with us. 
uh, the Phantom Cyborg Noodle Dakota. Mr. Frumpy just joined in. Howdy, Frumpy. We got Goobeer. Goobeer. And we got, <laughs> we got JJ's. I listened to part of JJ's show yesterday, and he's got another show coming on tomorrow. Uh, so uh, check out JJ's over there on Webcom Radio. He's pretty cool. And you, you know you know the thing about JJ's. And, uh, yes. <laughs> if you ever listen to his show, he plays some decent music, okay? He does. But... He tends not to play the whole song, right? And he right. and he talks over the music, which yeah, is he does. fine. Yeah. Which for his kind of show is perfect, I, I, I guess. But yeah. when I when I listen to music, I, I I like to listen to the music. But I still enjoy his show. He's he's a funny he's a funny ass guy. All right. Yeah, I like his accent, and I like oh, how yeah. he says "moose girl." I can't even say it like uh, how he says yeah, it because he's, he's a crazy crazy right. uh, Scottish. Dude, man. He's pretty thick Scottish brogue there. Oh, very thick, very thick. And uh, uh, I love how he says Moose Girl. Uh, it's yeah. like, Moose Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say it like that. Anyway, we get uh, Kiss and Bowie and the Sock Puppet and Smart Ass and uh, Vinaya to R.S. Who's peep yes. peeping and beeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway... Um, yeah, check out Webcom Radio sometime. You'll you'll enjoy listening to. to yeah, that. and he well, it's a it's like ten o'clock at his time. I, I know it's, he's it's ahead, weird. so it's he it's it's nighttime for him. I, I know he he tweeted something out today about his show is going to be at on eight o'clock, uh, and I and I tweeted back eight o'clock where? <laughs> right, exactly. It's like come on, buddy, you got you. you you're in a different time zone than a lot of people. <laughs> well, every, 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 you know, we got, you know, we got time zones all over the place. We're global. We're worldwide. Oh, we do. But, yeah, uh, for sure. So, uh, anyway. But like the other night, I was in the chat in the on the mixer listening to some music, and they were playing in Red Rocks, Colorado, which is an hour behind or behind. Me, yeah, it's mountain. It's mountain time. It's my time. Yeah, it's mountain time. So people were like, oh, the show's done. I'm like, uh, hello, it's only 10 p.m. Because the, the limit during the week for Red Rocks is 11. Yeah. So everyone thought that it was 11. I'm like, no, it's only 10 there, dude. They're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain time, people. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And the, but the California is two hours behind me. Right, right. And and the East Coast is an hour ahead. So Exactly. Not too hard to figure out. <laughs> There's only four time zones so, in the USA, so, you know. Right. Yeah. Yep. Easy enough. Well, I guess if you want to include Hawaii. But, right. You know. Or Alaska. Yeah. Is Alaska what? I, Pacific time? I, well, I think, Alaska, I think Alaska covers all the time zones. Oh. I mean, it's big. Alaska is big. Alaska <laughs> Alaska's huge. Yes, it is. So I, I think it covers all the time zones. I'm not positive on that. Okay. It's not, you know, not like time is real or anything, but. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we got a duck, a dead duck. All right. Um. Anyway, so uh, you had a good time at the at the festival, and who who uh, who's your favorite band? Uh, well, I mean, the local Minnesota bands I've already seen before many times, right? Right, right. Which I love those bands. You know, obviously, I love those bands. Okay. You know, the useful Jenkins and the Burbillies and the um, Kind Country. Those are all Minnesota bands, and useful Jenkins is a band that actually put the festival on. But they had, on Sunday night, they had a band that I had never heard of before mm -hmm. called Here Come the Mummies. <laughs> okay. And they were really, really good, really entertaining. It's it's like a fifteen piece band. Let's see, let's see here. There's a picture over here. Two, four, six. It's like ten people or more in the band, and they have like a horn section. They have keyboardists and they have drums. And they have a guitarist, and they they came in through the crowd, right. and they all dressed like mummies. Cool. Like they're actually dressed like fucking mummies, right? Well, you know, and, here, here's the thing yeah. about something like that. Yeah. They they may do it a bit. Of, I mean, that can't go on for long. No, it won't last for a long time. That's what I thought, too, when they were playing. Yeah. But they were really, really good, Graham. I mean, they were so entertaining. Of course they were. It was... was really good. <laughs> it was really good. Everyone, the crowd loved it. Everyone just got totally into it. It was freaking awesome. Uh, of, course, of course, there was some joke I heard 
uh, about an hour. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. What do we okay, have? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to request another song sung okay. by them. Anyway, there was, there, was, there was some joke that I heard about Angus Young. Yeah. What, Angus Young? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he started his, his act, the ACDC act. Right, he, right. He wearing the schoolboy outfit. Yep, yep. And now he's like 60-something. Uh, right. And he's like, Man, I didn't plan to to keep wearing this <laughs> through my whole right. life. Right, <laughs> my whole life. I'm freezing up here in these shorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forget why. Oh, Vinny's saying. What? What are you saying, Vin? I, I, I don't know what he's, he's talking I about. I don't know. Anyway, he's talking about time, time zones. zones. Okay, but these guys were really entertaining. I mean, that lead guitarist, he was dressed so much like a mummy, I actually thought it fucking was. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> like, his face was like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really, really good. I was uh-huh. really, I mean, there was a lot of good music there, but um, yeah, I like the good. late night set. I mean, Fruition was really good. Right, their right. mandolin player, their female mandolin player, is out of this world, and she she actually joined in a couple songs of the late night stage, and it was really fun. It was good. It was some good music. I got a lot of good dancing in. I realize that I can't dance as much as I used to, but I can still shake a tail feather. I'm sure you can. <laughs> Just not as long and extended. <laughs> As yeah. I used to be, <laughs> but but that 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 was the official kickoff of festival season, right? Yes, for the the summer season, correct. Yeah, it really yeah. never stops, you know, well, I because know. a lot of bands will have festivals in Mexico or Puerto Rico or Jamaica um, during the winter, which I have. I would love to attend one of those. That would be like a kick-ass fucking deal. And there's there's one in Vegas. I mean, they have them during the winter too. But right, as far right. as the normal festival season, for most people, yes, it's it's been the kickoff this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Or last weekend, actually. Yeah. Cool. This weekend, the Dead & Company started their tour tonight at Shoreline Amphitheater yeah, in California. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, since you mentioned Vegas, I'm going to slide this in there under the wire, right. under, the, under the context of Vegas. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, about a month ago, I I, I had mentioned uh, this guy uh, on uh, Jeopardy, this champion, this guy that had been... Yes, like, yes. I, I was talking to my dad. He actually brought it up. He was watching it when I called him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's up now. Him, Monday, he'll he'll bypass $2.5 million, Holy which shit. I, which is very close to the all-time record that was set by Ken Jennings some years back now, about yep. five, ten years ago. I, I don't know exactly when. We talked about that. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, this guy is—he's just amazing, and he's done it in like I think Ken Jennings took like seventy-five days to do it. This guy's done it in like thirty days. Right? Yeah, yeah he's like kicking ass. You know, he's he like, just, he, he's he just, like the talk of the town, dude. He's—he's uh, a, he's a you know Las Vegas uh, sports bet, betting gambler. That's his job. Right. Right. But, but he must be super smart to know all this shit. Oh, I mean. <laughs> hell yeah! He's kind of a dork, but you know who's not? Right. Uh, right. On, on Jeopardy. Anyway, also uh, Alex Trebek, you know, he remember he had, he's got the pancreatic cancer. The pancre- right? Yes, he's beating it. It's almost gone. Good. It's it's, it's basically in remission and now. And he's using CBD, I bet. I, I don't. It doesn't. Well, they, uh, I he, bet you he, he's using THC oil. I, I think he did do some chemo. Okay, so, that is awesome because yeah, that's so. a really hard one to recover from. That, oh, yeah, most yeah. people die from that. Yes, they do. Anyway, so yeah, that uh, he must be doing some THC oil. Oh, that's, I would imagine yeah. he's up there in Canada. So well, he's from Canada. Well, yeah, and, and California. He's got money. Right, he's in California now. I guess so. Right, they, they but got, still, you he, got, you got all the legal stuff out there. So. Right, he's doing that. He's yeah. not doing just chemo. I guarantee you, because that's that's usually a death sentence. Right. And they've come a long way with it, but they still do the chemo and radiation. That, that's their answer. That's their go-to thing. It's like, I just disagree. Hey, anyway, so I just, you know, I, yeah. I, I love that's the Jeopardy cool. I love the Jeopardy show, and I've been watching it for many, many years. And Oh, me too. I love it. I love Alex Trebek. He's a great, he's a great host. He's funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. He, he has to do some of the corporate crap because, uh, you know, he works for a big network. But, right, uh, but he is, he's, he's a, you know, and I just love what he said about his wife because she's about 20 years younger than him. Yeah. 
And when he was diagnosed with the cancer, he said that he would have wished he met his wife 20 years earlier or something, which, how sweet. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but I don't know when he met her, but if he'd met her, if he was like 40 when he met her and she was 20, that would have been a little weirder than if he was That like... would have been weird. She might be like 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. it, it, I know there's an age gap. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, that's all. That's all about Jeopardy. I, I just, you know. Yeah, no, that's a good show. And, it, it you know, more power to them. The people at Jeopardy are probably like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's all. That's cool. So, anyway, so yeah. uh, let's kick it into some jams here. Um, all right. I, uh, you know, we were off last week. Yeah. So this, this opening set, this is, uh, I don't know, whatever they say, uh, symbolic for the for the last week, I guess, um, <laughs> including today. So, uh, so we were off last week, and we're back this week, and then uh, today is the final day of May. And right. um, this is indeed the Freaker's Ball. It is. It is. So enjoy. Enjoy, people. I'm feeling freaky. Yeah. <laughs> feeling freaky there by John Nevis. Uh, before that, Blue Oyster Cult, then came the last days of May, and we kicked it off with Back in the Saddle, Aerosmith, yes indeed. So, uh, yeah, that kind of spells out what's going on here today. Those three songs, <laughs> Feeling Freaky, oh yeah. You know it. <laughs> so. so, yeah, I got pissed off today when I woke up and looked at the Daily Mail website. Okay. And was like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, okay, remember we talked about that lady that got shot in her alley that was in her pajamas, Justine Damon? Right. In Minneapolis? Yes. All right, so the cop was convicted of murder. Mm-hmm. Found guilty of murder, right? Right, 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 right. Now his attorney is seeking no prison time. Oh. So I knew something was going to happen. I just freaking knew it. And I saw this and I'm like, no fucking way, dude. Just because you're an ex-pig don't mean you get to have no prison time. If you're found guilty, if someone, uh, any of us, normal, like average people. Any of us normals, yeah. Not normal, but average, whatever. We're found guilty of murder? We would be doing prison time. So why does this motherfucker get to, what? Bullshit. This guy needs to go to prison. He has found guilty of murder. No, checks. No, go lay down. He has found guilty of murder. No! <laughs> Fucker! Shut up! Oh, God. No, he's he's barking because he wants me to fly. I mean, I understand because he's, you know, a dog. But anyway, um, so this guy is seeking no prison time. They're asking for a dispositional departure when he is sentenced June 7th for third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. Right. Hello? If this was any other person, they would be going to prison. Absolutely. This is ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah, third degree, it's, it's third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter, which is a lesser sentence than they sought initially, I'm sure. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just ridiculous. These fucking... Pigs think they're a, they're special because they work for the government, they work for the state, whatever. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Well, it's just like, oh, so because he's an ex-cop and blah blah blah. And, and right, and, hey, you know he should be going to prison on this. Did, What's did, the point of taking them to trial and finding them guilty if they're just going to turn around and say, oh, no, it's prison time? Right. What? What's the point? Why even find them guilty of the crimes then? Okay, but did, so did they, I mean, okay, he they... Still, I, I hope that he does, but, you know, Kate, you know how these things go? These cops get off with this shit all the time. Right. No, not yet. It's, it's so, June 7th. So. June 7th, we'll find out what the judge decides. In this case. Right. I just can't. 
I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. any average person that was found guilty of the same offenses, mm -hmm. it wouldn't even be up for debate. It wouldn't even, the, the lawyer wouldn't even, the attorney wouldn't even freaking suggest it. Because they know it wouldn't be granted. You know? Right. But why, why, he's special because he's the next cop? I'm sorry. They, I know he's doing his job, Kate, but they, they it went to trial. The jury found him guilty of those two offenses. Why, what's the reason that he should not go to prison? Well, you know, uh, uh, the attorney's always going to ask for no prison, but... Well, of course, but not, not if it was me or you. No, attorney would still ask. They would? Well, they, I mean, if they would have said thought they could get away with it, yeah. It seems unusual. It, it seems it, like an unusual, you know, maybe, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I, obviously, I don't know, but... Well, if they thought they could get away with it, certainly they would ask. Okay. But, I suppose, but it's like, I guess, because it's like this high-profile case, you know, it's a national and worldwide case. It's not, it didn't just touch people in Minnesota. The lady was a dual citizen from Australia. Right. And... You know, it was, it's been in, in the national or in the international headlines, the story. Yeah. And it's just like, I just, it just fucking pissed me off. I'm like, well, what? You know? Well, I'll see how this one does for you because. Right. Uh, okay, go ahead. Since, uh, since you're already pissed off and we're already talking about the scumbag, <laughs> scumbag police here. Right. Texas Police Union kills effort to close state's dead suspect loophole. The Texas law lets police yeah. hide records of suspects who die in custody from grieving families. Of course they do. It of course they want to do that. It, it could have been fixed, but the police union torpedoed the reform bill. So here it is. It says a bill would have closed the notorious loophole that lets, lets Texas police departments hide records of jail deaths, but it failed to pass the Texas legislature thanks to fierce opposition from one of the most powerful police unions in the state. Of course. Texas enacted a statute in 1997 exempting records of police investigations that did not end in a conviction from the st state's public record law. The aim was to protect privacy of innocent suspects, but the police departments figured, soon figured out how they could also use it to withhold information on deaths in police custody since you don't convict the suspect who's dead. Right. Uh, a Reason investigation published last December found at least 81 instances where to police departments cited the so-called the dead suspect loophole to withhold records of deaths in police custody from reporters, lawyers, and family members of the deceased. So, um, we've talked about several here on, on, we have. on not just on Frickers Ball, but in the RLM chat here. Yes. Uh, of uh, people that they, they say, oh, they, that woman committed suicide over like a traffic ticket or something like that. Right. Yeah. And, and for, like, yeah, and for right. whatever re for whatever reason they put her in prison over a, over, right. a, over a traffic ticket. Um, so now they won't. And so if the police were to actually investigate this suicide quote suicide, uh, there right. would, there would uh, have to be um, that that information would never get released because of the the dead oh. suspect loophole that was created. Not for dead suspects, but for innocent suspects. Yes, correct. So I, I, I mean, they're, they're just they're, they're just they're just it's ridiculous, terrible, nasty, disgusting people. And then I'm having this conversation with my kid tonight at dinner, and I'm like, um, wait, hang on, I'm trying to find that one. Kate, I know. I hope if you're listening. Do you have that link that you posted earlier about the Milwaukee cops making up the city of Milwaukee making a payment because of that death in the jail? I'm trying to find it, but if you had it handy, that would be great. Anyway, um, I'm having this conversation with my son tonight on the way home in the car, and I 
you know, we this we ran into this friend of ours that's an ex cop from Eau Claire, and he was like a cop back in the seventies, you know. And this is Eau Claire. And back in the seventies, it was a pretty mild beat. Like I don't even think the guy ever fires his weapon once in twenty five years on the job, right? Right. And I I said that's a rare thing these days. And Zach's like, I don't think it's a rare thing. I think it's just there's more media coverage on all these shootings. And I'm like, no, that's bullshit. <laughs> That is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because it's it, it ever since not ever since the Patriot Act and the NDAA, the police have become militarized. Okay, that's just and not it. just in big cities. Here in Eau Claire, too. Right. Which is not a huge metro- metropolitan area. It's not. A, it's not New York. It's not Chicago. It's not Milwaukee. It's not you know. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Kate, for posting that. Thank you very much, honey. I didn't even know what site to look for it at, so thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks for helping out during the show. It's kind of hard to look up stuff, too, when I'm broadcasting. So anyway, uh, the city of Milwaukee is going to pay a $6.75 million settlement to an inmate who died of dehydration in the jail after the water in his cell was shut off for seven days. So this is how they treat you. This has happened in April of 2016. The payment was made by the Milwaukee County and Armor Correctional Health Services, a company that was contracted to provide medical care for the inmates at the jail. We think that the amount of the settlement reflects the callous disregard for Terrell Thomas's life and the magnitude of his pain and suffering. Well, yeah, dying of, surfe- or of dehydration is not a fun death. Why, why did they shut the water off? Did they say that? I, I, let's see. I'm not sure. Let me read. Click, click, click. Uh, he had part of the rip mass mattress. He was pushing that down the toilet, making the water come out. Oh, I see. He was trying to cause problems. Be, let's see. Okay. Thanks, Vinny. Flooding in Thomas's cell after he was taken into custody. He had part of the ripped mattress, and he was pushing that down to the toilet as well, flooding it, making the water come out into, out from under his cell into the day room area. Um, she said she ordered his cell's water turned off until his behavior got better. Yeah, turn the water off, but still give the motherfucker some water. All right, I mean, for seven you days. Know, come on, there's got to be a better solution than just shutting the water off for seven days. No, nobody can live for seven days without water. No, it's like, come on, people. Yeah. They forced him to spend the last week of his life locked in an isolation cell 24 hours a day with no drinking water, no edible food, no working toilet, no mattress, no blanket, no shower access, no means of cleaning his cell, no no ability to communicate with his family, no relief from constant lockdown, no meaningful access to urgently needed medical or mental health care. That's what the complaint states. So uh, apparently uh, the city of Milwaukee is paying... The people of Milwaukee are paying. Well, actually, the payment was made by this this company that was hired. Let's see, da, 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 da. it says it. Well, actually, it says it's believed to be the largest jail death settlement in Wisconsin history. Yeah, uh, they're, they're stolen money. They they steal the money. The payment was made by Milwaukee County and Armor Correctional Health Services. Yeah, well, which works for the state. Basically, right. yeah, they're, they're hired by the state. They're still so, using stolen money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there you go. This is how you're gonna. This is how they treat you once they lock you up. All right. Well, it's. Uh, it's I mean, close. they could have put him. They could have put him in a rubber room. Something. You know, they could have. They could have sedated him and made him forced hi, hi, forced hydration on him. They could have put a hook, hooked him up to an IV. Right. They could have took measures to save this man's life. Yep. Not just shut the water off in his cell. Come on. Right. I mean, really? Well. And then so, like my kid was saying, you know, I'm just like thinking to myself, my kid actually believes this shit. And I didn't want to get into him, into it with them because we're just coming home, whatever. But I'm like, no, since the NDAA and the Patriot Act, the military has, have become militarized. The police. And that's that's you know, and it, it's funny because on the city of Minneapolis cop cars, it says something like protect 
with courage and serve right. the people. Or it's just like they still have this. They just change. It's not protect and serve anymore. It's a, they worded it differently. Well, you know, it's like Solomon. It's like, al- it's like Solomon always used to tell us whenever he called in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a militarized state. It's not a police state. Exactly. It, it's the, the, those police are acting as military. They are. And, so and if you, you think they aren't, you're wrong. And and, sure. and you are the enemy combatant. You, us, me, yeah. everyone. Everybody. Everybody, everybody yep. the, the people of whatever place they're, they're in. Basically anyone that does not work for them. You're, you are the enemy combatant. Yes, you are. So, here, fold this one into all that, and we'll, we'll close out this cop talk okay. after this one. Okay. Yeah. Pre-crime is here. Pre-crime. Pre-crime. All right. Law enforcement's new TAPS system predicts if you pose a future threat. <laughs> I think we talked about a different story on this before, like a month ago. All right, well, this, this is a, a new one. It's on Zero Hedge via mass, okay. mass private. But we talked about one. something similar, yeah, I'm pretty right, sure. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've been working on this crap for a long yeah, time. Oh, yeah, oh, anyway. yeah. Anyway, it says, it says it's been nearly two years since I reported on dangers of creating law enforcement run mental health assessment program in Texas in program in Texas police use MHAs which is mental health assessment to screen every person arrested for mental illness but the TAPS act first introduced last January would take law enforcement screenings to a whole new level it would create a national threat assessment of children and adults in the course of six months, the Threat Assessment Program and Safety TAPS Act has been see, has seen support of the bill growing to nearly 80 Congress members. National Threat Assessment Program announced during National Police Week. Why do they have a National Police Week? Anyway, uh, good question. Uh, politicians are master manipulators. What better way to garner public support for a national threat assessment program than to introduce it during National Pig Week? And who better to pick the uh, who who better to pick than Congresswoman Katie Hill, who laid it on thick, as a KHTS article revealed? We do this to honor the sacrifice of these men and women in blue who put their life on the line every single day to protect us in the yeah, vital right. in the vital role of law enforcement in the safety and well being safety and well being yeah, right. of our communities and districts. Mm-hmm. Uh, said Babin in his opening statement. And secondly to highlight the bipartisan solution that we all are working on to protect our communities and schools from the terrible acts of violence that we have seen and are uh, getting to be almost routine. Uh, Taking at face value, the TAPS Act sounds like a noble attempt to stop school shootings, but not as all as it seems. Of course, no. is it ever? Um, so they got a picture of a, a somebody reading a crystal ball here to, for the police to predict, mm-hmm. see, see if you pose a future threat. Um, uh, the TAPS Act would encourage law enforcement to give everyone a personal threat assessment, kids and adults alike, and single out those that they deem as future threats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Not, this is not a sci-fi movie. This is real. Right. Uh, this is by bringing threat assessment experts together and utilizing evidence-based behavioral threat assessment and management processes, we can bolster public safety. By the way, if, as I mentioned many times before, when you hear the word public, that means government. So when they say public safety, they mean government safety. By implementing strategies to identify and stop dangerous individuals before they can commit an act of violence. We have the expertise, yeah, right, to combat the targeted vi- targeted violence plaguing our schools, places of worship, and public spaces. But we have yet to fully implement it to prevent attacks. Uh, the TAPS Act has all the earmarks of a paranoid police military state that considers everyone 
a potential threat. The TAPS Act will create a Joint Behavioral Threat Assessment and Management Task Force to identify individuals that exhibit patterns of dangerous behavior that may precede an act of targeted violence. According to scumbag uh, senators Marco Rubio, Christine Senema, and Tom Tillis, the TAPS Act will create a National Behavioral Threat Assessment and management process for everyone. Yep. Uh, bills like this mean that America has joined the paranoid governments like China and Switzerland who consider kids to be potential threats. <coughs> Last Wednesday, the Swiss government proposed new laws aimed at preventing extremist violence, whatever extremist means, best of you listening, um, and forcing people, including children, deemed a threat to be registered, like a gun, with authority, uh, with house arrest at, at, as a last resort in some cases. Didn't we, learn, didn't we learn anything from incarcerating Japanese Americans and the war against communism? The never-ending war on terror in the TAPS Act should not be used as an excuse to destroy our Bill of Rights. Got news for you, buddy. That has been destroyed and erased long ago. So, uh, uh, yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, I, I tell you, it's just you can't make this shit up yeah, you, at all. You, you don't have to. It's, <laughs> nope. it's out there every day. There's yep. no. no yep. No, no. I see you talking about Jamie Claus there. You know, I, I still that girl gives me the creeps. I don't, I don't something about her. I, just, I know, but she it, actually, I've heard some in, inside information, Graham, that she's she's a little bit slow as far as learning delayed a little bit. So maybe that's what you're seeing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, picking up on, but the picture they keep showing it's it, it's not the best picture either of her. I mean, I, I would hope not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. She's actually kind of a cute girl. That's just not a good picture that they keep using. Yeah, no, it looks like something out of a horror movie. I don't know. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway. She's a young girl, though, you, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, last Monday was Memorial Day. Yes. Or Zombie Soldier Day, if you prefer. Right. Um, and that was the unofficial kickoff of summer. Yes, unofficially. Unofficial, because it actually starts the 21st of June. Right, right. But... Um, unofficial, so uh, here we go with our unofficial kickoff of summer. Sounds good. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, Satch! Joe Satriani's Summer Song right there for you. Before that, The Who in Summertime Blues. And we kicked it off with Mungo Jerry in the summertime. Yes, indeed, if a daddy's rich, take her out for a meal. If a daddy's poor, just do what you feel. <laughs> anyway, welcome to summer, folks. Yes, indeed, right here, summer on RealLibertyMedia.com. Freakers Ball Style! <laughs> oh, but all right, Boosie, there. All right, I am here. She are there. She are there. All right. Yeah. So we just had our first thunderstorm. Sweet. And lightning. It was pretty cool. It was just like a short lived. It just went a little one. Little one went through here. Just a little quick here. Yeah. But um, yeah, it um. Uh, It is the start of summer. It is, yeah, yeah. It was 80 here today. It's first uh, warmest day so far. Yeah, it was uh, 90 today, Zach said, because he was out working. Yeah. And um, we have had to mow the lawn twice now. Yeah, my. So the lilacs are blooming. The lilacs are blooming out there. My irises are almost blooming. Um, the trees, the leaves are out on the trees finally. Um, and it's yeah, it's basically summer now. So. Yeah, oh well, yeah, it's uh, stuff be growing now. Let's just I, I got I got you know weeds grow fast, grass grows fast, yeah. but uh, right. But my uh, 
Of my garden not growing that fast. <laughs> you had rain? Uh, a little bit, a little bit here and there, not too much. Uh, Do you June, water your garden? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, um, you, but, have, you uh, have a sprinkler or something? I, I just go out there and water it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, imagine you know, doing more, maybe water it more. No, 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 it's just not been warm enough. Oh, um, I see. Okay. Uh, apparently, you know, the most seeds like it, you know, at ground temperature to reach eighty during you right, know, and we just haven't been up there. So, uh, hmm. uh, but but we're getting there. It'll it'll, it'll, it'll get there. It's, it's, so it's, did you go with the gr- the soil that was? It, you just used the soil that was there. You didn't like bring in black dirt or anything. Well, right? no, I've got some of that, and and uh, oh, okay. But uh, the the stuff that's I've really got growing is is in the old the the, the clay dirt that I've. The clay dirt, the normal soil. For yeah, you. yeah, that's out there. So uh, that's the so that might be the best then. See, you you learn like from my understanding, it's a process, it's a learning process, just like with anything. Like it's a trial and error thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you are you trying the potatoes in the bucket at all or not? No, I'm not gonna do potatoes. I, I mean. Oh, okay. Potatoes are so cheap, and, and they are true. <laughs> you know, I, they take right. they take a lot of. I mean, I need you need more sandy soil for potatoes. I know that. But much. I'm just saying the bucket method is yeah, a yeah. Good, seems to be a good method. I I would right. was wanting to try it myself. But. No, I I put a bunch of stuff um, in uh, some planters this week. Let me let me, mm-hmm. let me let me bring up. Well, I'm not even gonna bother. Um, but I put I put a bunch of stuff in um, these jiffy pots. They're called. Yep, yep. Which uh, you just plant them in there, and then once they've grown to whatever. They're brown, right? They're yeah, like they're, made they're, out of peat yeah. moss or something. Yeah, they're really made out of peat moss, and, and then once yep. they, the plants are good enough size. Then you don't need to re dig them up or anything. Yeah, they no, just, you just plant the whole the whole thing in the, in the, the dirt. Thing. Right, yeah, that's so, the way so, to go. You know, they're not yeah. reusable or anything, but. Oh, no. But, uh, uh, whatever. So hopefully they'll grow it. I put a bunch of different stuff in there uh, more toma- right. yeah. tomatoes, jalapenos, bell peppers. Uh, oh, nice. Well, whatever those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, the strawberries, I don't really expect them to grow because of the, how I got the seeds and stuff from just some strawberries and stuff that I uh, germinated. Oh uh, no, I bought s- strawberries at the store, you know. Oh, and you I, and, oh, and okay. I just yeah. Took some, dried them out, harvested some seeds, and then Sweet. I then I realized, well, I could just chop up these same strawberries and put those in the dirt. Oh, sure. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, the, the, the same seeds, right? Anyway. Strawberries <laughs> should grow good there, I would think. But, yeah. but out in the yard, I, my... my they grow uh, fast, too, strawberries. You know, my cantaloupes are doing the best. Uh, good. But they're just, cantaloupe but, is yummy. But, but, they're, but they're just, you know, they're... they're just, Small. Well, yeah, they're a couple inches now. Um, now, do you have a lot of rabbits in there or a lot of wildlife that would be threatening your garden? Squirrels, rabbits, yeah, deer? Yeah, you know, I do. I do. There's squirrels and there's rabbits and there's skunks and there's... So do you have a fence around the garden or no? Well, there's a fence around the yard. Oh, okay. So, but does it keep the vermin out, the the, the critters? Uh, if, they, if they can scale a four-foot wall, they can get... Or jump a four-foot wall, they can get... Oh, in. so it's a wood fence. No, it's it's brick. Oh, it's br- oh, brick. Oh, well, cinder block. Yeah. You know, whatever. Oh, okay. So yeah, they're not getting through that, or well, no, but they they and I've repaired the back gate so that right, true. So that they yep. can't they can't come in that way unless they jump okay. over it, um, which they can do. <laughs> a deer could, yeah, easily. And cats. I get a lot of cats for some reason. I don't know. Oh, cats. Yeah, there's no deer, no deer here. Oh, there is not. Oh, weird. Okay. Well, I mean, there are deer, but they're not in my yard. Oh, okay. I've never, we I've have, ne- I've never I mean, seen it. I mean, it's Wisconsin. We have a shit ton of deer here. I've never seen it. You know, the, the deer would also have to jump over the fence. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, speaking of gardens and such things like mm-hmm. that, and this will make you really happy. It's an <laughs> old okay. It's an old article from 2016, May 29th, 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure it still holds true today, though. Okay. Glyphosate. Found in the urine of 93% of Americans tested. Oh, I'm sure. 93%. That means... Wow. Everybody. Most of the people. That means everybody. Yeah. So there it is. Uh, Glyphosate, the most used herbicide in the world, has been found in the urine of 93% of the American public during a unique testing project that started in 2015. Hmm. Glyphosate, labeled a probable human carcinogen by the World Health Organization, 
Cancer Agency, AIARC, whatever that is, in 2015, <laughs> has now been revealed to be ubiquitous in the first ever comprehensive and validated LCMS MS slash MS, whatever, MS twice, mm -hmm. uh, testing project to be carried out across America. Uh, the European Union is currently in the process of putting restrictions, that's been done already, like I said, this is a 2016 article, of the glyphosate d due to health concerns with member states so far unable to agree on the reapproval of the chemical beyond 2016. Uh, glyphosate containing herbicides are under the trademarks such as Monsanto and Roundup. Yes. Urine Urine and water testing at a unique public testing project carried out by a laboratory at the University of California, San Francisco. Glyphosate was discovered in 93% of urine samples during the early phase of testing in 2015. So I, I don't really need to go through all this for you, but because uh, you all know uh, that yeah. this is out there and it's in there. But again, if it's in our urine, it's probably also in our soil. Which could, right. which could be preventing some of my my crops from growing. It could be. <laughs> yeah. See, like it sucks because like I'd like to harvest dandelions, but I can't from my yard because my neighbor gets their lawn treated, <laughs> and then he also uses uh, Roundup. Well, Rome says his so pee. I can't do it. Ro no. Ro Rome said his pee's not killing the grass yet. Okay, well that's a good sign. Hey <laughs> Ben, wow, howdy. Uh, so Even yeah, that's, that's I mean it's just horrible that this stuff is is so. It's fucking terrible, and they uh, know you, it's fucking horrible. But yet they know aspartame is bad too. They know that they know fluoride's bad. They can sit there and tell you it's not, but they do know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They fucking know. Oh, absolutely, they know. There, there's no. There's and no. If you guys, we're talking about glyphosate being found in 93 percent of Americans' urine in 2015. 2016. And, and using their own words, this roundup is ubiquitous, meaning present, appearing, or found everywhere. And then I just love how the WHO, the World Health Organization, quote unquote, says it's a probable carcinogen. Probable, yeah, no, they right. don't say, yes, this is a carcinogen. No, they're not going to say that. Right. And because the, they and, don't want you to fucking think that it is when it really is. And the EPA, EPA says, no, it's no problem whatsoever. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> right. The Environmental Pollution Agency. Right. Right. So, uh... And then the uh, Federal Death Agency. Yeah. They have approved this to be used. But these are the same people that are bringing you chemtrails and shit. I mean, I heard Grammy's, part of Grammy's broadcast tonight, talking about Monsanto and Bear. They're yeah. the fucking makers of Agent Goddamn Orange from the Vietnam War, people. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, get it together. Figure it out. DuPont. <laughs> They're one of them fucking other motherfuckers, too. Just like S.C. Johnson. They're based in Wisconsin or whatever. They're fucking assholes. They act like they have environmentally friendly products. Right, you know, it's right. Like, no, they're not environment. Like, I get mad at my son when he sprays Axe in the house. I'm like, if you're going to spray that shit... Spray it outside, motherfucker. Well, I hate that shit. The yeah. smell of it, it's just toxic, dude. Yeah. And then even, like, stuff like Febreze. Like, okay, what, if there's a product on the market, it, like a cleaning product or an air freshener or something like that, okay, ask, tell yourself this before you buy one of those products that has toxic shit in it. Don't buy one of them products. Look it up on the internet how to make a natural version of that product. And sure. odds are you have the ingredients in your house at the moment. If you don't, you can easily get the ingredients in your house. And there are things like baking soda, vinegar, ammonia. Those are the top three. Oh, okay, okay, all kinds of great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, before you go out and buy Febreze, which is totally toxic... Make your own fucking Febreze, okay? Yeah, right. I did that. I made some. Yeah. Right. And it, because, and then make your own weed killer. All you need is some vinegar and some non-dish soap to make weed killer. Right, and it won't kill and your it's soil not forever. it's fucking cause you cancer. Right. I mean, hello, people. You, you, you can't trust them. They, they want you dead. They want you ill and then dead. 
They want you ill so they can make some fucking money off your ass and fucking put you in the fuck your you and your family on the street because they charge a hundred dollars for one freaking aspirin. Right. You know. So don't be relying on these motherfuckers in any way, shape, or form. Don't. Don't rely on the doctors. Don't rely on the fucking FDA. Don't rely on any of these motherfuckers. Well, I don't care who makes it. It's toxic shit. <laughs> Procter and Gamble, they're just as bad as F.C. Johnson. Oh, of course they are, yeah. Oh, they're just as bad. Well, you know, I don't know, yeah. I don't know if you remember from many, several, many years ago, the story about Procter and Gamble and, and their symbol that they use. Uh, that they're a, a Satan worshiping company. <laughs> <laughs> they it's, probably it's, are. It's, it's all it's, there. It's, it's all it's there. It's, it's, there. it's, it's, I mean, it's in their whole, logo. It's in their logo. <laughs> right. They're for death and illness and sickness. Oh, make yourself, you know, and then I, wa I watch some of these goddamn stupid shows on Hulu and stuff, and they have these commercials sometimes. And it's like these drug commercials. And it's like they... They tell you how great it is, and then they have to go through all the side effects. The side effects outweigh the benefits by far. Oh, and then it always says, and, or, or possible death. It's like, okay, leave that to the very fucking end, why don't you? Yeah. It's like, and most of them, what I've noticed for these drug commercials, most of them, one of the symptoms for sure is diarrhea. Okay? Right. So, you're going to have fucking diarrhea. Maybe I can go on one of them fucking meds that they're fucking promoting, you know. Right. And right. that's no way to live either. <laughs> exactly, uh, Rome's. It's ridiculous. It's just like, I mean, uh, anyway, I, it's I just, crazy. I just, I just searched on uh, Procter & Gamble Satan Worship. And then they got all yeah. these all these people trying to debunk it. Oh, no, they would never do that. Oh, sure. Right, yeah, of course. <laughs> And of course, the the top debunker is Snopes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. Oh, give They're me a not break. credible at all. No, not 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 whatsoever. And then, okay, so I get into this conversation again tonight, and we're at the bar tonight with my son, and we were talking about Paul. We started talking about his dad for one, their dad for yeah, one thing. Yeah. And his leanings politically, and and I said, oh, I try not to talk to your dad about that. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we got to the conversation about mainstream media and stuff. And he said, okay, Mom, well, the websites you look at for information, those are just someone's opinion. And I'm like, no, oh, so, not always. So so he believes like CNN or Fox. Right, he, or... He, I go, dude, CNN <laughs> and Fox, they're told what to say by the government. You do realize that, right? And oh, yeah. but no, it's someone's opinion. I'm like, no, it is not. <laughs> They're told what to say by the government, dude. The sites I look at, it, oh, yeah, but the sites you look at, that's all just someone's opinion. I'm like, no, not always. I mean, a lot of it's historical fucking fact, and that can't be disputed. Right. Historical fucking fact cannot be disputed. Well, it can be you know, because Do we a lot always of know the truth but... about it? No, we don't. Like, <laughs> we don't know for sure if the moon landing actually took place. Do I think it's a bunch of bullshit? Yes, I do. Right. Do I think it happened? No, I don't. Not when they said it did. And no, not, certainly not. Not the version we were spoon-fed. No, no, not at all. No, no, I don't believe that at all. Yeah. You know, and I, I do know that the mainstream media is a mouthpiece for the goddamn government. Sure. And anybody that believes the fucking mainstream media needs their head examined. I'm sorry to tell you that, because a lot of my friends, and if you're listening, I love you, but you need to get away from mainstream fucking media. Because Absolutely. it's making you go nuts, and it's making you not see the truth. It's making you be who they want you to be, the government. Right. And unless you want that, then go for it. But otherwise, you know, wake the fuck up. I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, you know, okay. Don't go. It, oh, it just gets me so okay. okay, go ahead. Here, check this one out from ArsTechnica.com. Okay. U.S. Department of Energy is now referring to fossil fuels as... Freedom gas. What? <laughs> That's right. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> the, the, the Department of Energy is, is on... Yeah, I got some gas for them. Yeah, is on its path to uh, energy dominance with a bizarre rebranding. Uh, <laughs> so, in a press release released uh, published on Tuesday, 
Two Department of Energy officials used the terms freedom gas and molecules <laughs> of U.S. freedom to really? replace your average everyday term natural gas. Uh, the, the, the press release was fairly standard, announcing the expansion of liquefied natural gas, LNG, terminal at the Freeport facility on Quintana Island, Texas. It would have gone unnoticed had an E&E &E news reporter not re not noted the unique uh, men mentonomy. What the hell is that word? M-E-T-O-N-M-Y. Oops. Put too many things. Mentonomy? Mentonomy. The substitution of a name of an attribute or adjunct for one thing that meant, for example, suit for business executive. Uh, or they, whatever. Naming something else than it okay. really is. Yeah. The, so they named it Molecules of U.S. Freedom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Department of Energy Assistant Secretary. Sorry, but that's fucking ridiculous. It is. The Department of Energy Secretary, Assistant Secretary for Fossil Energy, Stephen Winberg, is quoted saying, With the U.S. in another year of record setting natural gas production, I am pleased that the Department of Energy is doing what it can to promote an efficient regulatory system that allows for molecules of U.S. freedom to be exported to the world. Also, also, also in the press release, the U.S. Under Secretary of Energy, Mark W. Menzies, refers to natural gas as freedom gas in his quote, Increasing export capacity from the Freeport LNG project is critical to spreading freedom gas throughout the world by giving America's allies diverse and affordable source, clean, <laughs> source of clean energy. Um, as if natural gas is really clean energy. Anyway, Slate noted that the term right. free, freedom gas, this, the term, seems to have originated from an event with DOE Secretary Rick Perry, the biggest, <coughs> the biggest moron in the world. I mean, he he, 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 made, he makes Joe Biden oh God, look like yeah, a genius. Oh, my God, this is terrible. So, anyway, earlier this year, uh, secret the secretary signed an order to double the amount of LNG exports to Europe, saying the United States is again delivering a form of freedom to the European content, continent, and rather than in the form of young American soldiers, it's in the form of liquefied natural gas. Uh, the re a reporter at the order signingly jo signing jokingly asked whether the LNG shipments should be called freedom gas, and Perry said, "I think you may be correct in your observation." <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking dumbass! <laughs> he's a, guy, he's, he's you know, like the he's this a, guy is like a moron. He is like the biggest dumbass out there. <laughs> And not only is he like one of the biggest dumbasses, and it was obvious that he was one of the biggest dumbasses, but then Trump appointed him as the uh, head of the energy department. So what does that say? <laughs> Freedom gas. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, there you have it. Your news speak, uh, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, Okay, what else do I got here? <laughs> I think I have something else. Oh, oh, wait. Let me cover this one before you get to the next one there. Okay, sure. All right. Um, do you like chocolate? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you like that? You like when I have a craving for it, I do. Yeah, you like Nestle's Crunch? Those are all right. I mean, I, I usually when I I try to get like high more high quality chocolate, like Ghirardelli or something okay, like that, okay, or well, Lindt. And I, I don't know how it works for Ghirardelli or not, but um, apparently Nestle says requirement to report use of slave labor would cost consumers more money. Well, that's because chocolate comes from Africa, and then they use this, this child slave labor to, like, uh, harvest it, the cocoa. Yeah, yeah. it says that while, while the Free Thought Project often reports on the megacorp Nestle, and their rampant abuse and exploitation of drinking water supplies across the nation, few are aware that the company has been found using slave labor. What's uh, more... Uh, Nestle, right? Yeah, Nestle. Yeah, uh, fuckers. We have, ne two ne we have a huge Nestle plant here, two of them, yeah. in Eau Claire. Uh, what's more, as governments across the world attempt to crack down on the use of slave labor by requiring companies to report on its use, Nestle is fighting at saying that it will end up costing the consumers more at the register. 
So if I got to pay an extra quarter for this chocolate bar to prevent you from making slaves of people, you know, I'm fine with that. Not that I buy Nestle shit anyway, but um, yeah, I'm really fine with not with paying a little more so that you don't use slave labor. Right. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Bastards. Anyway, last month, right. Nestle issued a warning against the proposed legislation that would require them to report on their effort to weed out slavery within their company. And I'm probably fucking misinformed or something because I'm assuming that Girardelli gets the same cocoa, the cocoa from the same source as Nestle fucking does. Oh, I'm sure they and probably Lynn do. probably does too. Yeah. Even though Lynn's like supposedly in Germany. Yeah, at Hershey's and all, all of them, you know. Oh, yeah, they get it all from the same source. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter the brand name, which is really sad. Unless it says like trade free um, product, then it they're all getting their. Don't matter what brand you're buying, it's coming from the same source, and they're all using slave labor. It's not just Nestle. The the company says yeah. that the cost of checking to see if they are forcing people to work against their will will end up being passed on to the consumer. <laughs> just, okay. <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah, well, I'm that's fine. what I mean by free trade. Yeah, I, I'm perfectly fine with paying a little more if uh, you are the, not forcing the documentary people. That, I'm sorry, Grim. The uh, documentary that should be watched, I believe this is the one it's called, The Dark Side of Chocolate. Yeah. And it's from 2012. But this is the one that talks about how they harvest or get this mine. I guess they, it would be kind of like mining or harvesting the cocoa so they can make the chocolate and they do use child labor slave labor yeah well, let me just do this paragraph here nestle owns over 2,000 brands and operates in 189 countries and they're and, huge and has a history of using slave labor to produce its products yet yes. they are warning against legislation with that would have them report on issues related to human trafficking slavery sexual servitude and child labor within their businesses and operation supply chains. These people right. are evil bastards. Yes, they are. These, Nestle is evil bastards. These, these people are scum. They are. And, and, That's uh, why, like, I, everyone, like, every once in a while, someone will say, "Oh, go so, work for Nestle." I'm just like, okay, no, so you have that, that documentary. I'll put that into the blog too. Not working. Yes, thank you, Grim. Yes. Uh, I'm not gonna work for them. And not gonna buy from them. No, Presto, fuck you too. I, I will. Fuck you. Not buy your products. I am not right. going to support your slave laboring shit. <laughs> right. You know, it's like. Oh my God. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, I uh, found this one uh, last. Well, we we were off last week, so we, yeah. some of these links are saved from two weeks ago. Right, right. Anyway, um, this, I found this one on May 21st, 2019. How cannabis cannabis came from high origins. From what? Marijuana evolved 10,700 feet above sea level on the Tibetan Plateau 28 million years ago. The study of ancient pollen suggests. The origin of marijuana has finally been discovered. It dates back 20 million years. Researchers analyzed po pollen fossils of the plant and found it slowly disappeared, or dispersed, excuse me, disappeared, no, it's well, widespread. <laughs> um, I just read that wrong. This yeah. first disappeared, you know. They're okay. Research has analyzed pollo, pollen fossils of the plant and found it slowly dispersed over millennia to Europe, China, and India. Mm -hmm. It has long been known cannabis originated in Central Asia, but its le exact location had remained a mystery until now. Archaeological evidence of its use as a drug, dates back to 20, 2, 2700 B.C., the nearby Xinjiang region northwest of China. A team of researchers led by the University of Vermont, imagine that, Vermont, um, examined 155 existing pol or fossil pollen studies from Asia in order to reconstruct the evolutionary and human-related history of cannabis in Asia. Anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. It's very interesting, yeah. They've actually found where they think uh, it originated from. Yeah. And that's the Tibetan Plateau, which makes total sense. Sure, sure. 
Because, yeah, it would be around the Nepal area. Rome. Yeah, yeah Tibet. Uh, yep. Right, right. Anyway, I think that's interesting because it, it, if it originated there, that means it got dispersed through the world via seeds being transported and be, seeds being traded and stuff like that. Yeah, I believe that, Rome, because that's apparently that's where it originated. So sure, sure. It's meant to grow there well, apparently. Right. And I do see that Rome's made another comment in the chat that most jobs are slave labor these days, and that is correct. Even well, if you work in the United States, you're it, a fucking it, it is, it is, slave. It, it, <laughs> if it, it, you're working is, for them, you're a slave. But you're not being forced to work there. You could No, true. It's not forced, you're, but... You're, 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 you may be not liking it there, but you're not being forced exactly, against exactly, your will. Exactly, but at the same time, if, in order to be... You know, if, unless you fill, unless you don't fill out that that W nine or whatever the form you have to fill out when you w get a job, W four, then you're working for them. Like I got into a conversation with another chatter um, a couple weeks ago because I made the comment that I applied for a job in the corrections department for the state of Wisconsin, right? Yeah. And I know it's a state job, okay? Right. At the same time. Any other jobs that I'm working, if I fill out that fucking tax paperwork, does it matter if it's the Department of Corrections or if it's a trucking company at that point? I don't know. I, I don't no, know. You, it you, doesn't. Whatever. And so you, you, they were trying to give me crap because I was working, I applied for a state job. Right. But if you work at any job, you have to fill out that fucking paperwork. Right, unless you're working under the table, you know. Exactly, unless you're working for cash on the sly or whatever. You're working for the goddamn state because you're paying the taxes. You're doing the income tax. Pay. Absolutely, absolutely. You're doing, and it doesn't matter if it's the Department of Corrections or not. Right. Yes, the Department of Corrections is a state entity. But even when I worked at the tr trucking company, the government was taking money out of my fucking check. It doesn't matter if I work for the actual state or not. Yeah, it's just, you know, to me, uh, you, it's it's the jack boots. You're 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 assisting the jack boots. Right, I get that. I get the principal part of it. Yeah. You know, which I don't want that job. And you know what? I won't even get an interview for that job. Which I applied for that job three weeks ago and haven't heard shit. Yeah, well, I'm not so surprised. I'm not getting that. Which is fine with me. Well, you've you've got marijuana arrest, so probably. I do have in the past, but yeah. that was like nine years ago. Well, it don't matter. Whatever. They, they, no. they don't forget. <laughs> no, they 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 do a huge vetting process. I'm yeah, sure for yeah. any of those state jobs. So. All Which, right, that's yeah, fine. You know, I really don't want it. I applied for it because it was there, and I'm like, fuck it. You know, it yeah. wasn't like, oh, no. Right. You know, I can't work for the state. Because when you work, when when you fill out that tax paperwork, you're working. That, that means you're giving the government, the state and the federal government, per permission to take money out of your fucking motherfucking check. Right. Absolutely. All right, well, let's play some more jams here. and uh, Okay, let's do that. We will come back. So enjoy these tunes. This is the full-on Moose Girl set. Woohoo! <laughs> Bring it on, baby! Oh, yeah, very nice, very nice there. Uh, that was Here Come the Mummies with... Ra ra ra. Uh anyway, before that we had the infamous sing that string dusters uh with Rise Sun, apparently the uh new title song off of their new album, and kicked it off with a freak flag. Here come the mummies. Yes indeed, a full on moose girl request set there. Uh good stuff, man, good woman. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, dig it, yeah. Yeah, no, that was the the last act on um, Sunday night was Here Come the Mummies, and it was really good. I mean, the video really doesn't do it justice because they were really good, like really entertaining. They had the whole crowd fired up. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah, swing, man. That's, uh, that's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, the horn section was amazing. They were cool. They, I mean, it wasn't just the music. Like, they put on a performance, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't just music straight up. It was just like a total performance. Everyone was just like, you know, all these fucking 
hippies on fucking acid and mushrooms and drinking and, <laughs> you know, of course, you know, it doesn't take much to please us, you know. Oh, right, yeah, everybody having a good old but, time. Yeah, what? Everybody having a good old time. Oh, yeah, I, I got to be, like, the fire keeper, and it, thanks to me, like, the, the communal fire, like, the, that's in the music part. Mm-hmm. Like, it got to be, like, especially, let's see, the first night, Friday night, it was got pretty chilly. And, you know, once the sun go, went down, it's pretty chilly, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, let's get this fire started. So I went over to buy the bar there where they had the fire word, wood that they were selling. I was, you know, I'm a, I'm a Harmony Park veteran. So, like, I pretty much have, like, I can make shit happen. You know what I mean? Right. I'm just saying. I can do it. I can make shit happen. And so... Um, I go up to the guys working. I'm like, "Hey, we need some fire for the or some firewood for the fire over here." And they're like, "Okay, we'll make that." You know. So then one guy brought a few pieces of wood over. Blah blah blah. And then I'm sitting there talking to some people there. I'm like, "We need more wood," you know. So I hired or I hire like I asked these two guys. I'm like, "Could you guys please go over there and get some more wood? Just tell them it's for this main fire, and they'll be good with it." They're like, yeah, we'll do that, blah, blah, blah. Right, So right. we got the fire going that night. So then Saturday night, same thing. I have to be the one to start the goddamn fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is fine. I, I was happy to do it, right? You know, sure, and sure. I consider myself pretty much a fire keeper anyway. So it was like, you know, I'm a fire sign. It just goes with the program. It's part of it. Yeah. It's, you know. Yeah, cool. been that way my whole life. So I got the fire started in the communal fire area all three nights, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Great, great. Yeah, you know, and it was awesome because it's pretty nice to be able to see the music and be sitting by a fire. Oh, that's great, yeah. You know, because they have, like, benches around there. And, you know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. It's just, like, a nice spot, you know. If right, you, if you right. want to take a break and sit down, you don't have a chair there, you know, you want to be by the fire, you just go there and take a little break for a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great, cool. So, yeah, I mean, people are asking me, oh, how long have you been coming to Harmony Park? I'm like, oh, I think this was like my 14th year. They're like, oh, my God. <laughs> but <laughs> I actually met some people that were there, like, were longer veterans than me, even. Yeah, well, I'm sure, yeah. And I'm like, wow, well, because it was established, like, in 96. Oh, okay. So I've been going there for 14 years, so. Yeah, and it's 23 um, years, yeah. I guess, so. Right. And so I, I freaking got the fire going. And it wasn't that packed. It wasn't that. I mean, it was a nice, decent sized crawl, decent sized crawl, but it wasn't as packed as I've seen the park before. Not even. It was less than last year, even. Right. But last year they had like Phil Lash and the Terrapin Family Band. Yeah, yeah. Which is like a Grateful Dead offshoot. Sure. And so there was a lot more people there last year. You yeah. know. Yeah. But it was still a really fun time. I mean, it, oh, cool, but one man. thing that did happen, which is freaky as fuck. Uh huh. Okay, so good thing it wasn't super packed in there, for one thing, right? Okay, okay. Because, okay, it's all these pine trees. Like, the parking lot, is it's like a, a farm field, right? All right. And so, but in the campground, it's all these ancient oak trees. Like, let me look up a link for how many parts. But anyway, um, so Saturday night, a tree fucking fell. Okay. One of the huge, big oak trees. Like, we're talking really big. Right, right. Like, huge. Like, hot, tall, right? Okay. Because these are ancient oak trees. A fucking tree fell. One of the ancient oaks fell. Okay. And it it landed on tents. Well, well the fall. time that it fell was perfect because most people weren't in their tents at that time. That's good. No one was killed, <laughs> but this one guy, who, his tent, the, the tree fell on his tent, and he has he had his guitar in there, his acoustic guitar in there, yeah. in the case, right? Yeah. Well, I walk, I'm walking down the path, and I'm like, "What's going on here?" And I see this tree, huge tree on the fucking ground. Okay. And I'm like, "What the fuck happened?" So like a tree fell. I'm like, "Oh my god!" And so these these rescue people are like service people, whatever they were, first responders, I don't know what the fuck they were. Okay. They they were jacking up the tree, and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, oh, they're jacking up the, the tree so they can get it off my tent so I can get my guitar out of there. 
I'm like, dude, it's not going to be good. He's like, yeah, I know. I still <laughs> want it. You know? Right. I'm like, yeah, I get it, you know. Yeah. Anyway, they pull the guitar out, and the case is totally, sm I mean, it's smashed to shit, dude. Right. I'm like, dude, if that was you, that's what you would look like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank God you weren't in there. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, I can play replace my guitar. But then they looked at the tree. Uh -huh. It's all rotted out. Oh. So, anyway, if I was the owners of this property, I would be thanking my lucky stars that no one, because they did take two people to the hospital, but not for major injuries. Okay. But I would be thanking my lucky stars for one, that no one was killed. You know. Yeah, sure. So, anyway, they're planning on having this huge, um, a big festival. It's called Project Earth, and it's in the middle of June. Okay. And Project Earth is a family-oriented festival. Like, I've never been to it, right? Because it's, like, for kids and families. It's for families and kids and shit. Right. And it's, like, a toned-down festival because it's more family-friendly, right? Yeah. And people just love it. And it's all it's almost sold out. So if I was them, I'd be moving the camping out to the field for that one. Until they get some experts in there to figure out which trees are going to fucking fall down. Because you can't be having that kind of liability. I mean, shit, if only one if one person would have been killed, that could be the end of the fucking whole park. Yeah, I would imagine so. I mean, seriously. It, it, just If you look at that link that I clicked, the, the first picture on there, you can see the oak trees in there. You can see how it is. Yeah, no, I looked at that. And these are ancient oak trees, so they're like uh, at least 100 feet tall. I mean, yeah. Or, I don't know. I mean, I'm a bad judge of height when it comes to trees, but they're Everything. fucking big. Yeah. You know, and it's like, that was scary, dude. I'm just so glad it happened when it did, because if it would have happened when people were sleeping, there would have been death, dude. Right. There would have been. I, I mean, just the bass on that guy's guitar. Okay? Yeah. And it's oak, and oak is heavy. Very. Yeah, it's very heavy. Good wood, though. Yeah. Oh, it's great wood. Like, the the wood they were using for the fire was pine. Yeah. Most, there, like, there might have been some oak mixed in, but it was mostly pine because um it was popping a lot. Yeah. But they brought it in from an outside source, which was fine, too, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's like, the one night, I'm like, you got we got to get this fire started. I was getting cold. And it, the sun's going down. I'm like, okay, it's time to start the fucking fire. You know, come on. Yeah. We have to have we have to have a fire going in this space here. You know, okay, okay. I'm like I said, I'm a seasoned veteran from there. I I, I know the deal. I know the drill. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was a really good time. It's all. I mean, it is a magical place. Yeah, you know, no, I, I was I just checked grateful. Out, I was checking. What? I was checking out that gallery last week to see if I could see a picture of you. Yeah, well, I might. Be, I'm sure I'm in some. Like well, I caught a video on Facebook. Yeah. And you can kind of get get a glimpse of me dancing. It's from the late night set when uh, Mimi from Fruition was playing. Uh huh. And and me and this other girl Amy. Oh, God, I got a friend here on Facebook. Anyway, um, me and this other <laughs> girl Amy were dancing our asses off, dude. Yeah. Yeah, right in the front. Yeah, we're like, like yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> It was awesome. I mean, you can't really see me, so, like, I might save the video and maybe post it, but yeah. um, that's okay. You can't really see me anyway, so. Right. But um, watch for me on Blue Ox, at Blue Ox. Like, uh, I don't need to remind you, Graham, I will not be here that weekend. And which weekend is that? It's the June 13th to 15th. Okay. I won't be here. I'll be Blue Oxing. Third. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the wrong month. So, yeah, just... Okay. Um, but word of the wise, it is streamed live on jamgrass.tv. Jamgrass.tv. All right. Well, you mind, can, let that sink in. You can, you can remind us as it gets closer. Oh, I will. You know what? You know I will. <laughs> so anyway, um, we were we missed last week, so I'm kind of behind a little bit two weeks here. But yeah. I did save this one, and I thought it was quite interesting. And I'm a fan of this Oh, wait. Person. i got, I got to do this one first. All right. Go ahead. Because I ahead. already put it in my... My oh, sure. No problem. So uh, here it is. And for some reason, they believe these people more than other people, even though though we know they are a bunch of liars. But th that's all right. They People believe now more. 
Okay. We, we know they exist. Alien, aliens. Uh, yeah, aliens. Uh, Ex-U.S. defense official turned UFO sleuth probes unexplained military sightings. Uh, this posted up on RT.com uh, a couple of days ago, uh, yesterday. Uh, so here it is. It's been a big week for UFO fans. First, the U.S. government admitted the state has indeed investigated such phenomena. The ex-defense official, Christopher Mellon, explained in the dialogue on unexplained aircraft even further. The existence of UFOs is no longer a question. It wasn't a question already, uh, but a foregone conclusion, Mellon explained during an interview on Fox and Friends, and you know you can trust them. Um, <laughs> the, the, Navy, yeah, right. the, the Navy itself has publicly acknowledged the fact that they exist, and Navy pilots have gone on record acknowledging that they exist, he argued. The Navy pilots in question reportedly claim they were seeing UFOs every day for almost two years between 2014 and 2016. Mellon confirmed that there are strong indications uh, the objects the pilots had been seeing have technological capabilities far beyond what puny earthlings are capable of, including the ability to reach speeds over 5,000 miles per hour. Well, I'm sure much more than that. However, the new evidence does not mean the big questions have been answered. While we know that UFOs exist, now investigators are, ask, are tasked with asking, what the hell are they doing here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, they're, they're checking on their creations. That's what they're doing here. Anyway, forget Russiagate. If what he is saying is true, these potential alien aircraft could be a vital national security issue. How about a how about a how about a global security issue? Yeah. Yeah, like they really care about nations. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Mellon pointed out that their presence on U.S. military ground shows that U.S. sovereignty is being violated by vehicles of unknown origin, which certainly unknown sounds more, yes, which certainly sounds more threatening than buying Facebook ads. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, while there hasn't been any being-to-being -being contact between the military and the UFO presumed, oh, 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 presumed oh, oh, pilots, oh, oh, none, that sorry, we, sorry. none that we know of, anyway, <laughs> Mellon, noted, Mellon noted that the unidentified vessels have come head-to-head -head with Earth aircrafts. Their reaction strongly indicated that these were intelligently controlled vehicles. He also hinted that other NATO allies have been experiencing a similar phenomenon. Yeah, think? Uh, due to the ex-government yeah. officials' conclusions, coupled with current Defense Department's admissions, unidentified aerial phenomena uh, mean that it's time to get on the phone with Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Then again, it, it might be that also be that Mellon is just trying to plug his new History <laughs> Channel documentation show about UFOs. Right. <laughs> Speaking of UFOs, are you done? Welcome to Earth, motherfucker. <laughs> are you done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> okay. So along those lines, which is surprisingly weird, because it's, it's, I didn't know what you were going to talk about. Yeah, right. Okay. Ghostbusters Dan Aykroyd says aliens are here and they want sex with human women. Well, who doesn't? Right. I mean, who, who wouldn't? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. We're fucking hot. That's right. Um, so this is from May 21st, 2019. The actor says he's seen four UFOs and the most extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial visitors are just tourists coming to look at this beautiful planet. Ghostbusters star Dan, Dan Aykroyd is convinced aliens are already here and that they want to have sex with human women. Uh, the actor the says he's been seeing four U UFOs. Uh, and that most extraterrestrials well, you, you who know come why. by Earth are just tourists coming to look at this beautiful planet. Well, I'll bet you I, I know why that, that, would be the, that would be the case, because I, <laughs> I, I saw the documentary called Earth Girls Are Easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
they pro and that probably got beamed out into space and they said, Oh well, those girls are easy. Let's get on down there. Um right. <laughs> And then and then he goes on to say that uh the star is concerned that some aliens want to harm people and use them as lab rats and he is convinced that sixty sixty percent of us already know it's true. He says the proof is starting to dri is to, is going to start dribbling out. The aliens are interested in your ova, your femininity, your reproductive parts, your DNA. And your pussy. Yeah. Uh, they would love to draw blood and fluid and would love to impregnate a woman and produce a hybrid baby. That's what they're up to here. He says, I, be I believe some aliens are here to harm us. They are, there are many forms that come here with nefarious purposes and want to use us as lab rats. The Blues <laughs> Brothers actor 66 is the only star who has spoken about their alien encounters. Former model and ex-wife of Rolling Stones star Ronnie Wood, Joe Wood, has been open about her belief in the extraterrestrial, too. Oh, that's no big deal. I believe in the extraterrestrial. Fuck. Sure. Anyway, here's that story. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. That's that a great he's one. he's actually speaking out. You know, so he's putting himself out there because half the people that read that, or over half, are going to think he's fucking insane. Well, now instead of being a Ghostbuster, he could be an Alien Buster. Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, while we were talking, or while Grim was talking, I came across this story, and this is from May 29, 2019. Okay. And this goes along the lines with the whole Monsanto and glyphosate and Roundup and blah, blah, blah. And DuPont and 3M. Okay, here's another one we didn't mentioned before 3M. Right. DuPont and 3M knowingly contaminated drinking water across the US lawsuits allege. So I believe um, that. Of course, of course we didn't mention ADM either, so No, we didn't. Um New Hampshire is the largest state the latest state to file suits against a number of companies including DuPont and 3M for their roles in the nationwide drinking water contamination crisis. Right. The lawsuit claims that the polluted water is the result of a manufactured use of perfluorinated chemicals, a group of more than 4,000 compounds collectively known as PFAs. Right. The suit in New Hampshire announced on Wednesday, May 29th, joined several other class action and state lawsuits throughout the country. The complaint alleges that the companies failed to warn of the dangers of their products. They do that all the time. Right. They also claim that the companies knew that releasing the compounds in the environment would make groundwater and surf surface water unfit for drinking. Fucking right, you think? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, even though they get called out, the damage is already done. Sure. You know, it's like DuPont. We already mentioned them earlier. They're motherfuckers. They we are. We mentioned S.C. Johnson. We mentioned, what was the other one, the bastards? Monsanto and Bear. That created uh, Agent Orange. Right. Okay? And guess what? The problem with Agent Orange, it didn't just affect the people that they wanted it to affect. It affected everybody that came in contact with it. Absolutely. Including the United States military at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, fucking A, people. That's right. You know, and these corporations, they fucking, they get away with this shit. And they've been getting away with it since I've been alive. And that's 52 goddamn years. Yeah. Fuckers. So All don't right. tell me that you're trying to protect the environment. Don't tell me that the EPA is a good thing. No, do not tell me that at all. And right. so, on another note, Grim, do you have a story? I do, I do, and it's a good one. Okay, go <laughs> it's, it's one that... <laughs> All right. Mom orders T-shirt for three-year-old from a Chinese retailer. <laughs> okay. Gets one that says, Fuck the police. <laughs> for a teenager. No, for for, for a three year old. Or a three year old or toddler. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I would not put that on my three year old because you know what? Some trigger happy cop might take offense and shoot that fucker. The fucking kid. <laughs> it says sometimes when, call your kid a fucker. I'm sorry. Sometimes when you mail order products from online Chinese retailers, 
You right. never know what you're going to get. Uh, those $3 aviator sunglasses could be blatant bootleg of Ray-Ban sunglasses, or those $10 fashion headphones may end up being a perfect copy of Beats by Dr. Dre. And then there are the hilarious cases of chinglish, non nonsensical, and often hilarious English mes messages translated from Chinese that are awkwardly worded, occasionally downright offensive. Such was the case for Kelsey Don Williamson, 23-year-old mom in Benton, Illinois, who ordered what she thought was an adorable T-shirt for her three-year-old daughter, Salem, uh, which displayed the beloved children book characters, the frog and the toad. Uh, the, the shirt retails for five bucks in the Lady Baby store on AliExpress.com and uh, <coughs> the Hang Hangzhou-based online mega retailer. Um, uh, the page, the page advertising the shirt describes the product as kids to Friday Rog design baby girl boys T-shirt kids funny T-shirt. Sleeves, uh -huh. whatever, some kind of thing, but then, but when Williams finally received what she expected would be a G-rated children's T-shirt, she found the shirt was emblazoned with a decidedly adult-oriented design element. The timeless slogan, "Fuck the police." <laughs> <laughs> Funny. That's oh, awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. It is awesome. I'm hoping she gets their money back, though. Uh, hell, I'd put that my kid to school on that one. Oh, a three-year-old? No, no. <laughs> three-year-old don't even go to school yet. Yeah. So anyway, um, Illinois becomes the 11th state to legalize recreational marijuana. Sweet. So that tells me that Wisconsin's next. Yeah, well, you, you do have that... Uh, left-leaning uh, governor now. So. I know, he's a piece of shit, but, you know... Yeah, that's all right, that's all right. Oh, shit, that's not the what? Are you a robot? Is that the title? No, that's just when when, when a site won't let you... Uh, but that that's the right article. Oh, okay, all right, good. Uh, when, when, so anyway, yeah. um, there we go. You know, maybe Chicago will become better now? I doubt it, but... I, I doubt it, too. Um... They should call. They should change the name of Chicago. Shit, Chicago. Shit, Chicago. Yeah. Shit, Chicago. And you know what? It's turned to shit really bad. Ever since that motherfucker Rahm Emanuel has been in fucking has been the mayor. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. Oh, no doubt about that. He's gone now, though. I think. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I think so too. But whatever. Either but way. No, it don't fucking matter. The, da it, you the know, damage has been done. Yeah, and you know what, Chicago. It's dangerous, dude. Sure. And well, anywhere you go, it's dangerous. Like I was driving to fucking Harmony Park in Southern Minnesota, and people drive like absolute fucking shit. Even truck drivers drive like absolute fucking shit. Right. I'm like, you guys are fucked up. You guys are driving like total fucking shit. Anyway, I made it. Thank God. You know, but it's dangerous. Sure, sure. Seriously, people drive. It's dangerous out there, people. I'm yeah. just saying, yeah. oh, be no. careful. No doubt. Just don't, as soon as the light turns green, don't automatically go through it. Because I live here in Eau Claire, and the worst, the worst thoroughfare or busy wait, street is Claremont. And it's all street lights. And people run red lights all the fucking time on Claremont. So if I'm on Claremont and I'm trying to turn onto it and I get a green light, I always wait like a couple of seconds and look, make sure there's no fucking red light runners coming through. You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, seriously, people, it's dangerous out there. Oh, yeah. Very. It is. And it, it, it you don't know. Like, I, this one lady is in the exit only lane on the right of me, and this is on 94, so I'm going like 75 or more. Miles per hour, right? Right. And she realizes in the last last second that she doesn't want to be the exit only lane, that she needs to be in the lane that I'm in. Uh huh. And so, on the last second, she cuts over. So I have to hit, you know, hit the brakes kind of hard. Yeah. It's like what the fuck? And then I I pass her, and it's some lady that's like, driving with the, the two hands on the steering wheel. This little old lady that's like eighty five. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like. 
oh my god. I was like, dude, I cannot fuck up this car. You know? Yeah. And, and oh my god, people drive like fucking shit. It's just crazy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter where you fucking go. No. All right, well, here's this. I hear you sparking. Um. That was a cigarette. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Ben and Jerry's to start selling CBD infused ice cream. Cool. As soon as it becomes legal. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so as you saw, you've seen just about every ice cream ice cream flavor under the sun, but now Ben and Jerry's has thrown us a bit of curveball by saying it will be adding CBD infused product to its range, telling customers, "We're doing this for our fans." The only problem, they can't do it until it becomes legalized. Currently, the U.S. FDA prohibits the use of CBD, CBD in food or drink. However, it will be holding a public hearing, uh, that was today, it was supposed to have that public hearing, uh, on legalization. Um, the Ben and Jerry submitted a comment to be considered, so I don't know if that got through or not or how that, what the thing of that meeting was. The regulator has said it plans to use the public comments to inform federal working group looking to explore potential pathways for dietary supplements and or conventional foods containing CBD to, l to be lawfully marketed. You probably already know that we're all fans of sing things, things of all things groovy. Fans of all right. things groovy. That's easy for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> a message on Ben and Jerry's website said, So it's no surprise that we can't wait until the latest food trend, CBD. We are committing to bringing CBD infused ice cream to your freezer as soon as it's legalized at the federal level. Uh, citing okay. a, a recent National Restaurant Association survey, which found that three in four chefs named CBD and cannabis-infused food as the hot trend for 2019. And the message continued, currently the FDA are a bunch of assholes and they prohibit adding CBD to food and uh, beverages. Now, this next um, little associated, not associated, article talks about yep. ice cream that you can make at home. Without cream, without 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 dairy products. Okay. Banana ice cream, four ways. Ooh. Yep, and it shows you how to make it here. They got a little video. Um, it says, uh, I think it. "Little wonder that bananas are the world's most popular fruit. They are con it. convenient yeah. to carry and eat, and are uh, protected by from har harmful pesticides through the thick peel." Right. And are delicious, and they turn when they turn extra ripe can be used to make multitudes of desserts, such as the one ingredient ice cream, uh, with the four mix-ins below. And so they uh, talk about stuff you can mix in there with them, um, and it looks really cool and good and tasty. And uh, let's see, they got honey and sea salt, toasted chocolate, coconut, mm -hmm. almonds and dates, peanut butter and chocolate, and it basically you just uh, freeze the, freeze the banana, then you slice it up. And, Put it in a food processor with whatever you want to mix in there with it, and boom, bop, a boom, and you got yourself some some tasty banana ice cream that's just really just banana, frozen banana stuff. Um, right, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, sounds really good, though. Yeah, you know, what the hell, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for anybody that, uh, you know, you got some, some, some overripe bananas, and freeze them up and make, make yourself some something tasty. Yeah, there you go. There you go. They're really yummy. Mm-hmm. All right, let's play some more jams here. All right, let's do that. And this first one, a little tribute to a man that uh, you may have known throughout Leon? over the years that passed away yesterday, I think. Yeah, Leon. Yeah, Leon Redbone. Today, today, uh, yeah. yeah. Today? It's no, true. I think it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Okay. Yeah, whatever, I could be wrong. I don't know. Anyway, he's gone, and no, it was yesterday, because I saw the... Uh, tribute video to him yesterday so um anyway so uh rest in uh, peace mr redbone it was interesting watching that tribute video i i didn't request it for the show it was like 20 minutes but um apparently he was a very mysterious dude that uh 
that people just didn't, you know, they just didn't know a whole a whole bunch about the guy. He he kept to himself and anyway, interesting guy and uh excellent musician, funny dude. So uh here's to you, Mr. Redbone. <laughs> But thank you for watching, the old world is back again soon. <laughs> All right, uh, that was Jolene, the old Dolly Parton song uh, by Leo Maraccioli of Metal Cover there. Uh, great stuff. Uh, Jack White did a great version of that song, too, back some years ago. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Ronald Reagan. With all you need is weed, everybody. Uh, and we kicked it off with uh, Leon Redbone. And please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Uh, like I said, Ed, rest in peace, Mr. Redbone. All right. So, uh, wow, good music. <laughs> if you like that kind of stuff, hopefully you do. Hopefully you do. I don't know. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> So you there, Moose? Yes, I'm here. All right, all right, good. Do you hear me? I do, I do. Okay. So what did you think? I switched the headset there. No, there's more of a storm rolling in. The dog's going insane from this thunder. I hear him. Yeah, he's not liking it. <laughs> he's not liking it. <laughs> well, what, 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 did, what, what, what did you think about Leo's version of Jolene? I liked that. It was good. I liked it. <laughs> And, and I think I shut another window or something. He can hear it too good. All right. I'll be back. Okay. On. Well, uh, I'm just setting up the songs here for the uh, next tuning set there. But, uh, yeah, so I don't think we're expecting any storms coming up here over the weekend. Let me take a quick peek here. Oh, wait. No, we are expecting tomorrow. It looks like we got some thunderstorms hitting in spots and Sunday as well. So, uh, yeah, we got some thunderstorms heading our direction as well. And uh, it looks like this could, next coming week for right here in Moriarty, New Mexico, we're going to be doing seven, high 70s and low 80s throughout the week. So, yes, indeed, I'm going to say summer is definitely here, uh, at, le at least for uh, the way I see it. Um, j normally, normally here. Uh, June, which starts tomorrow or today for some of y'all, because uh, it's not quite midnight here, but for some of y'all it's already past midnight. Um, yeah, it uh, it um, June is, but anyway, so it's June. So uh, <laughs> what, am I, what am I talking about? Uh, anyway, so um, June is normally the wettest and warmest month in Moriarty, New Mexico. Yeah, well, just generally around New Mexico, not just Moriarty. But, okay, I'm back. Uh, so, yeah, we're we're expecting some thunderstorms coming up it's over... It's now. Uh, yeah. It's hailing right now. Uh, that kind of follows along with thunderstorms, though, you know? Oh, well, yeah, but I'm so I'm glad I put the edge. Both our vehicles are in the garage right now. Yeah, yeah. But my car is sitting outside at Hyundai. So. Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. All right, we have a it's little... My edge. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Suck it. We... It's the weather. I can't control this. <laughs> no, you cannot. Can't you can't stop this. it. You can't control it. That's all right. Um, he's uh, a puppy. He He's not experienced thunderstorm before. Right, right. So it's like, okay, he's freaking out. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. I don't want to be afraid of them either, you know. Well, I know, but you know, it's just it's just the way it goes with dog. My my dog's always barked at thunder. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, you can't stop them. It's like. No. No. How am I gonna stop them? You know. Ah, you can't. Anyway, yeah. so uh, this is an article. It's a new article that just came out today. <laughs> However, it's about a topic that we've talked about many times before. Yes. Uh, but apparently okay. they've done a new, another new study on the topic, okay. um, affirming what we already have known for a long, long time. 
Which is? New car crash study highlights the irrationality mm -hmm. of DUI laws based on THC in driver's blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. Right. Uh, so the researchers found no statistically significant relationship between testing positive for THC and contributing to accidents. This is on Reason by Jacob Sullum. Um, and they have they have a graphic here. It says, drive baked, get busted. Uh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so a new study of Canadian drivers, and now pot is legal across Canada, who were injured in car crashes shows once again how difficult it is to measure marijuana's impact on road safety and how right. misguided it is to use THC blood levels as a legal standard for impairment. Exactly. The, the, the study reported in the journal Addiction, which of course marijuana is not addictive, um, no. found no significantly significant relationship between testing positive for THC and driving that contributes to accidents. Uh, the researchers, led by British Columbia Vancouver emergency physician Jeff Brubaker, looked at crashes within British Columbia that injured about 3,000 drivers whose blood was tested for marijuana, alcohol, and other drugs. Mm -hmm. They used police reports, which were available. Uh, Hang in a, on. All right. I'm going to mute. All right. They, they used police reports, which were available in about 2,300 cases to determine which drivers bore responsibilities for accidents. Among drivers with THC blood concentrations of less than 5 nanograms per milliliter, uh, they report, there was no increase of, uh, of crash responsibility. Drivers above that threshold were 74% more likely to be responsible for crashes than drivers who did not test positive for potentially impairing substances. But the okay. difference was not statistically significant. Uh, of course not. No. By contrast, drivers with blood alcohol concentrations of 0.08% or more, the current cutoff for driving under the influence, DUI, in almost mm -hmm. every U.S. state were six times as likely to be deemed responsible. Drunk drivers... Drive like shit. They do. Yeah. Definitely. Drug um, driving, it, dr alcohol impairs driving. It impairs everything. It <coughs> operating any kind of machinery, right. Alcohol impairs fucking. Um, anyway, <laughs> the, the additional risk was 82% and 45% respectively for recreational drugs other than marijuana and for sedating med medications such as Benadryl or Xanax. All all those differences were statistically significant. So the findings of Brubaker et al. conclude suggest that the impact of cannabis on road safety is relatively small at present time. Very very, right. very almost non-existent. Yeah. They they caution that the results might have been different if they had looked at fatal crashes, and that the picture could change of marijuana legalization in Canada leads to a substantial increase in stone driving. It won't. It doesn't. It, actually, you drive safer when stoned. So, stick, I believe that. I believe that for uh, sure. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Hansel. <laughs> <laughs> Ta exactly. Put that Hansel. in your pipe and smoke it, Hansel. Um, right. <laughs> right. All right, all right. <laughs> oh God! Well, um, you don't have anything else, but Mark. I, 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 I do. Um, okay. <laughs> because and this is scary, 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 scary stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and and it's posted on science, um, sciencemag.org. Okay. I find it scary. You you may or may not. I don't know. Okay. Uh, House spending panel drops U.S. ban on gene edited babies. I don't like this. I don't like it either. Anyway, and for whatever reason, they mentioned Democrat led, but whatever. Uh, a Democrat led spending panel in the U.S. House of Representatives has dropped a provision 
that banned embryo editing with the intention of creating a baby. The draft yeah, bill is not still, a good idea. No, I, you don't want to start messing with that. Uh, the draft bill is still moving through the legislative process, however, and Republicans will likely push to restore the language. Uh, the ban was first added to the law that funded U, the U.S. government in 2016. It bars the FDA from considering any clinical trial application in which human embryo is intentionally created or modified to include a heritable genetic modification. Although, a, a different writer bars the National Institutes of Health from funding human gene germ, human germline editing or mm -hmm. the genetic modification of sperm, egg, or embryos. Such work is permissible with private funding, which, fine, that's fine, but don't right. steal people's money to create these monsters. Yeah. However, researchers would need the FDA approval for for a clinical trial, mm -hmm. which brought me to question: what 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 do you how do you clinically trial embryos? Uh, you're right. Going, you're, yeah, you don't want to know, dude. I I, I mean, you you've got to create little babies. Yes. In in order to do this, and so you're right. making monsters in a lab somewhere. Right. And and that's I, I that's all I could say is these I mean what you're creating is monsters, They're, right? These, these are not I, I, human, I, right? Yeah, I, I don't know how you call them human anyway. anyway yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't either. Anyway, you can't this, you can't really? Right. You gotta uh, call them something else. Right. A 2020 draft spending bill approved on the 23rd of May by the House Appropriations Subcommittee that funds mm -hmm. the FDA does not contain the writer as uh, CQ, I'm not sure who that is, uh, first reported yesterday. A Democratic aide speaking on a background told Science Insider the provision was dropped because it was inserted in private three years ago and has never been subject to public debate. We believe this provision could limit important scientific research, and if Congress chooses to prohibit such research, that should be done in the light of day. Right. Um, don't do it. Right, no. <laughs> Freaking do not. This is this is so wrong. I I, I can't. Just okay. Just, so uh, along the lines of UFOs, since we've talked about a couple of different stories along those lines tonight, I found. Are you were you were you done? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Okay. Um, this is from today, May okay. well May thirtieth, twenty nineteen. Okay, yesterday. Um, do do these Pentagon pictures prove UFOs are real? Tom Leonard investigates after U.S. Navy pilots claim to have spotted fast flying objects during late night training. So I think they're leaking this out on purpose. So, I'm not buying it for a second. Say, anyway, say, say what there. you say. Say that last thing you said again. Uh, Tom Leonard investigates after U.S. Navy pilots claim to have spotted fast flying objects during late night training. Okay. And who is he? Uh, he is the writer of this article for the Daily Mail. The fighter pilots could hardly conceal their surprise as they tracked the object moving at incredible speed above the waves. Wow, what is that, man? Says one excitedly. Look at it fly. Infrared cockpit, cockpit camera footage taken on a later sortie by the... See, this is written by a British dude. Yeah. A later sortie, which I don't know what that is. It's it's a just a, yeah, it's a, it's a flight mission. They, they, okay. Yeah. By the same U.S. Navy squadron reveals another immensely fast flying object, this one spinning in midair and moving against a 120 knot wind, again accompanied by a commentary from totally baffled airmen. Although, although the footage only shows one of these objects, the pilot is heard to say, there's a whole fleet showing up on his monitors, and as one of them in the film turns slowly in the air, a shot voice climbs in. Look at that thing. It's rotating. So here you go. This is from recent. This is from the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this art, this Tom Leonard dude is the guy that wrote the article and he investigates after, you know, I don't know where he got the information. So, you know, I think, I think they're just leaking this out slowly but surely. I think they've known, well, I know they've known about UFOs and shit for a long time. Oh, sure, sure. 
they've dealt with certain extraterrestrial, for lack of a better term, they've dealt with them. The U.S. government has. Right. Big time. Like back in Eisenhower days, like in the 50s. We're talking the 1950s, people. Yeah. So, um, but interesting that they're releasing this information. I mean, but it's there again. It says these objects were spotted over over the eastern seaboard between 2014 and 2015. So this didn't happen just recently. It's just now the story is being written about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we we everybody's known. Oh well, well, yeah, everyone's known. I mean, I have. Yeah. For a long time. I mean, anybody with a with a rational, open mind has known. Right, you have to be foolish to think that it's not possible. Oh, right, absolutely. You know, it's not. It's not. Yeah, you'd have to be foolish to think that. I would. That's my description. <laughs> okay. But. Well, let me close out with this story because I okay. found it. Okay, let's do that. I find it humorous and disturbing at the same time. Okay. On on uh, oh, oh, where did I go there? I scrolled on the wrong place. <laughs> Um, on, on the Mind Unleashed. Public punching bags installed across Manhattan to, pro <laughs> to provide relief to frustrated New Yorkers. And, and they, they got these punching bags attached to like light poles and such, and they got a picture of a girl looking all angered, aggroed out, punching in the, this bag here. And it says, let's face it, the city can be a rough place sometimes. Whether it's the endless pollution, the strange smells, or rush hour commute that squeezes the life out of us, <laughs> the urban landscape often resembles a pressure cooker more than it does a livable habitat. With that in mind, one U.S. design studio has taken matters into their own hands and installed cathartic public punching bags across Manhattan in hopes that residents can take out their daily stress in a healthy way rather than unleashing it on their neighbors. So I guess in New York, people just generally go around punching each other. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. The initiative by the Savannah, Georgia-based design collective, Don't Take This the Wrong Way, was introduced as a contribution to New York City X Design or New York City Design Week 2019 uh, as a means to allow locals and visitors alike to release their frustrations, whatever they may be, in a safe and communal space. And for those who were perplexed by the sudden placement of the bright yellow boxing gym-style punching bags, the collective accompanied their sidewalk installations with a statement which reads, The concept explores designing common spaces for the emotions we all face, good or bad, as we travel from point A to point D, B, we deal with a good number of frustrations, frustrations that go beyond design systems that happen uh, well because we are human. The punching bag will offer an outlet for these emotions as a means to maybe develop a healthier way to address personal and collective issues in a public setting. Now, I know these are brand new and they just put them up there, but how long do you think it'll be? Before you wind up with Trump's face painted on these things. <laughs> oh, I fuck. Really? Oh, <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, we got to do our last set here. <laughs> All right. Let's do that. We'll be back, people. Yes, we will. So uh, enjoy these wonderful tunages. Oh, tunages. Tunages. Yes, I, I do like that word. That I made up. All right. This is the uh, Heim Heimat Damstick. I don't know how you say it. Some German word. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Christopher Amoroso doing his uh, great version there of Black Betty. Before that, we had one of, one of the better mashups that I've seen. I, I, I could listen to that all night, man. Uh, Motorhead and Bob Marley doing Killed by Exodus, Killed by Death and Exodus. Uh, Bill McClintock is the guy over there on the YouTube that did that, so uh, nice. ch check out his stuff, man. He's, he, 
He really knows how to, to, to weave them vids together. And we kick it off with the Heimadamich doing Highway to Hell in Oompa Loompa style. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So uh, tomorrow you got the Dark Table at noon uh, Eastern with Flash and whoever. Um, I, I, I think his system is all good and set now to take on mm -hmm. callers. Uh, he got a new headset, and everything seems to be rocking and rolling over there. Please. So, uh, yeah, Good. check that out. I'll be on Sunday at noon uh, with the Grimm's Blues as a three-hour show. And we'll be playing trivia here in the chat, followed up immediately by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop-ass. And uh, check the schedule over there on RealLibertyMedia.com for all the rest of the shows throughout the week. We'll be back next week with another Frickers Ball. Yes, we will. Y'all have yourselves a great weekend and a great week. Yeah, everyone have a good weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. Peace. Peace.